Hello, I'm Mark Lowdy. During Singapore Investment Week, we want to make sure that you are fully equipped with all the knowledge that you need to invest. One of the things that、uh, you'll probably come across, if you haven't already, is analyst research reports. Apart from looking at the recommendation and price target, a lot of investors skip the body of the research report because it's just too complicated. So we've enlisted the help of Wang Liye, who's、uh, equities sales dealer at UABK Hen, to explain to us actually what goes into these research reports. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Firstly, let's talk about the fundamental analysis、uh, and the sort of work that analysts actually do in order to write these research reports.、Mm -hmm. What goes into it? Uh, basically, fundamental analysis tell us how the examination of the underlying forces that affect the well-being of the company, and the purpose of doing this is to derive a forecast and to profit from future price movements. So, basically, what we do is to do a top-down approach, which includes the economic analysis. Industry analysis and company analysis. Right. So you take、yeah. the big picture and then、yeah. you kind of drill down until you reach、That's、the company. That's correct.、Yeah. And, and what sort of analysis is this again? Are we now looking at economic statistics or, or what? What、uh, bits of data, I guess, go into the reports? Yeah, you can look at the economic indicators like、um, GDP growth. Yeah, that kind of are.、Um, and for industry analysis, you can look at the、um, sector analysis, and also、uh, for company analysis, you can do some evaluation. Yeah. And then you can see whether the company is performing better or worse than the rest of the industry, and better or worse than the rest of the economy. Yeah. After all, it's more important to、uh, compare the company to company within the same industry. Yeah, Now let's let's then drill down to those tables that you usually see in analyst reports, full of numbers and、uh, and ratios. What's the、That's、most、right. important ratio that you tend to look at? I think the most important ratio that you should look at first is the profitability ratio for the company. Yeah. And. Uh, this could be measured by、uh, a lot of ratios, in a sense. But the most important one that you can look at is the、uh, net margin. Yeah. So net margin measures how many cents of each dollar in sales that are, are available for distribution to shareholders. So for in investors, that ratio is. Relatively very important.、Yeah. Right. I, I guess the challenge with net margin is that sometimes the margin is very, very thin.、Yeah. For example, if you look at the oil rig builders in Singapore, their margins are only around ten percent or so, maybe slightly more.、Um, that doesn't sound like a lot. And you look at Noble Group, for example, where its net margin is only around one percent, but that's still pretty good. So even if you know what the margin is, how do you know that this is a good margin or this is a not good margin? That's where you have to compare the. Different companies within the same industry. You can't compare an apple with orange, but you have to do the、uh, the analysis on the very、um, balanced basis. Yeah. So you compare it with other companies、uh, in the business.、Yes. What about ROE that we hear so much about? Okay, ROE is an under profitability ratio that、um, measures how the、uh, company is performing. So、uh, return on equity、uh, generally measures、um, how much profit. The company has generated with the money that、um, investors have invested,、yeah. and then to see whether the return is、yes. uh, is, is sufficient. And once again, and you know, again, sometimes、yeah. sometimes you see ROE of fifteen percent, and people say that that is、uh, really really good or really really bad. And、uh, another number again, how do you find the perspective on that number?、Uh, I think the comparison is really important in the sense because you can't compare、uh, the ROE for for like.、Um, Casino industry to a ROE in the utility industry, correct? Yeah, you can't say it because the returns might be different. Yes. Okay, so let's、uh, let's say that we've established that this particular company is that whatever it is that you're looking at is doing relatively well in terms of margins and ROE. What are the other ratios that you look at? Okay, next I think we look at the leverage ratios because、uh, leverage will give you more sense on the company. How 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 is this company doing? Is it doing well or is it borrowing debt to financing its?、Uh, Growth, yeah. And so, leverage,、mm, in essence, means what precisely? Leveraging assets.、Uh, you can use debt to equity ratio to measure that. On, and also you could,、um, you have to weigh the cost of debt financing to the、uh, returns that this company generates on its debt through investments or business activities to see whether this out,、uh, the, the cost outweigh the benefits. Yeah, so you have to do the cost-benefit analysis in a sense. Right, I see. You know, the, the funny thing is that uh, as uh, as individuals, as householders, we try to keep our debt low.、Mm -hmm. We try to pay off our mortgage, pay off our credit yeah, cards. Yeah, I understand. But for companies, actually, they want to have a little bit of debt, don't they? Yeah, that's true, because debt can. 
debt financing can help them to um, to grow more in a sense and they may have higher higher growth and higher return in a sense yeah so that's why it's called high risk and high, high return. I see. Yeah. So when you come across companies that have no debt at all, should you be thinking, well, that's pretty good, they have no debt? Or should you be saying, hmm, management is not leveraging their assets enough. They could be growing faster if only they took on a little bit of debt. Yeah, I would say that. But um, uh, my understanding is that so far, uh, I have realized that the casino industry doesn't have any debt and they are really cash rich and I think um, they may debt financing may be a w another way to raise funds for them. Right, I see. But if they, they don't have any options to expand, after all there are only so many casino licenses in the world, yeah. then I suppose there's not much point taking on debt and there's, there's simply no place to grow. Is that a fair comment? Uh, yeah, you can say that. But because they are cash rich, that's why maybe they don't need to borrow any more debt. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you really have to again look at the individual company yeah, to make true. sense of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we, so we've talked about uh, profitability. We've talked about leverage. Um, but what about companies that uh, have a lot of costs? Now that'll show up in, in profitability. But are there other ratios where we can say yes, this particular company is very productive, very efficient? Oh, then you have to look at the efficiency ratio ratios, namely current ratio or quick ratios. Uh, uh, for example, quick uh, carbon ratios measures how this company can pay off its current liabilities with its current assets. And that's one of the most important measures to measure how, uh, whether this company is doing very efficiently. And another ratio is quick ratio. The only difference is that quick ratio excludes the inventory from the current assets. And this is relatively, I mean, extremely important in the sense that um, for some companies, they have difficulty in turning inventory into cash. So in any event that the short-term liability need to be paid off in immediately, they may have. Uh, the current ratio may overestimate the company's financial strength. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you exclude inventories, then you get a sense of how strong the company really is. Yes. Right. So quick ratio may give you more uh, complete story for that. Right, so yeah. quick ratio doesn't mean that you can quickly calculate it. <laughs> you can. Right, okay. <laughs> but the formula is relatively simple, yeah. But the, format, the formula is simple indeed, and that's what we're seeing on the screen at the moment. Two more, and one of them is price earnings, which I, I guess is the one that, that investors tend to look at the most, the price earnings multiple. Yeah. And I have to ask you that question again. You know, generally speaking, people say a price earnings multiple of 10 or below is a relatively good multiple. In other words, it'll take 10 years for the company to earn per share what it's priced at per share. But... Uh, again, is it as simple as saying, okay, at 10, that is the cutoff mark? Or should we say a price earnings multiple of 15 should be the cutoff mark? No, you can say that. There are two primary components that you have to consider. One is the market value of the stock. The other one is the earnings of the company. After all, earnings are, earnings represent profits, which uh, every business strives for. So earnings is very important. Um, if the company isn't using resources effectively, it will not um, make any profit and the company will generally be, um, I mean, pro problems will eventually arise. So earnings, uh, you have to look at earnings after all, yeah, instead oh. of the PE ratio itself. And also uh, another ratio is, is called PEG ratio, which might give you a more complete story because PE ratio uses the past earnings and PEG ratios consider about the future growth rate. Yeah. So lastly then, let's look at price to book ratio. Price is what you pay, value is what you get. So shouldn't we just be buying stocks below book value? Okay, well, a low PB ratio usually means that the, the stock is undervalued, but we should also look at other stuff. For example, the, the market ma might believe that the asset value is, o is overstated or the company is not earning a very good return on its assets. So if the first is true, then the investors should be aware of this kind of situation because uh, there's any chance that, if there's any chance that the asset value face any downturn correction by the market, investors may have negative returns. And secondly, if the second is true, uh, there's a chance that new management or new business conditions may provide a turnaround opportunity for these companies to keep strong positive returns. Right, so low PB ratio is a good thing, but ask yourself why.
Yeah, why is correct. it why is it trading you have so to ask cheaply? That. Yeah, correct. Right. Thank you so much for coming in to explain it to us Thank today. You. Wang Liye from UOBK Hen. And Singapore Investment Week is on 25th to the 31st of August. The website is on your screen now. Go to it and check out various seminars and courses that you can take to become a smarter investor and invest for a secure future. I'm Mark Laudy. Thanks for watching.